Islam treats women better than the West. Hey, those are facts. Let's have a look at those facts today. Here's a question. Do women really need the ideas of Western feminism? Nope. It's a controversial one, I know. But instead of asking whether women need Western feminism, maybe we should flip the question. What if it's Western feminism that would benefit from the wisdom and balance that Islam offers? Let's hear from someone who knows this firsthand. Would someone mind telling me how the West treats women better than Islam? How atheist men and atheist culture treats women liberated and free and well? Can someone please explain that to me and, and how? Because as far as I see it, we've been sold a lie. Our families have been brought up in the most spiritually impoverished way. Impoverished so true, way. so and what I mean by true. That is, we never had any guidance. We didn't have any direction. We didn't have a yes. God. We didn't. How is that? gonna yeah 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 this is the this is the new lifestyle in the west do what you want be who you are it doesn't matter we will not uh, show you the way find the way yourself try this try that destroy your body uh, sleep around do this do that and discover yourself what is the right path like like this is the issue like i mean you have freedom of choice right and i think it's good that the law protects your own choices right for example Let's say you want to buy a property there or you want to buy this kind of clothes. You want to do this sort of hobby, this and that. Like, it's, it's good that you have freedom of choice, right? But it doesn't mean that you can't raise or educate someone and show them the path and they themselves decide whether to walk this or not. I mean, if, if you look at the teachings of Islam, this dunya is a trial, is a test. And there will be people going to the hellfire as well as people going to paradise. So, so there are people that are failing the test and people that are passing the test. So that means there is a freedom of choice and we humans were created with free will. But that does not necessarily mean that you don't show the way to people or guide them, right? And this is something that is lacking a lot in the Western world and in modern liberal Christianity, unfortunately. I see this here in Germany where the sons of pastors, they get drunk and the ambulance take them away. I mentioned the story before. Or a 13-year-old Christian girl is crying and depressed at the bus stop because she lost literally her, her V, right? Because she had a guy and committed zina, Audubillah, and now she's very regretful. And with 14, she's on pills for depression and stuff. Like, this is not normal, right? Like, you have to at least raise people and give them the right direction. If they want to turn from that direction, or if they want to make other choices once they reach a certain age, it is their sin, right? And there is, of course, a punishment. And if they don't believe in the punishment, it's up to them, right? I mean, look at previous prophets like Nu alayhi salam for how long he was calling people to Tawheed. And they know, no, la ilaha illallah, no, 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 no. And they were like this, they got punished by the flood. So if you're following a destructive lifestyle, sooner or later something negative will come to you, right? But why would you let your civilization go down a negative route so that they turn to a good route once they meet the negative. You can prevent people to go down a negative path in the first place, right? And this is the thing, like the upbringing here is horrible spiritually. Like there's almost no more religion in the West uh, when it comes to um, like the new generation. And this is so sad. We have a God. We didn't... How is that gonna like play out? This might seem like a publicity stunt, but listen to her. It's clear that her path to Islam was her own decision. This woman shares her own story about how she converted from being an atheist to a Muslim and what motivated her. Let's rewind a little to this white woman's story. When no one was there for her, the only thing that gave her hope was Islam. She was living in a dark pit hole of parties, drugs, and extreme health yeah. problems. She was following the idea of Western feminism. Many are like but this why in was Germany. this woman feeling all alone and completely shattered? Here, let's see how the woman tells us about her journey of finding God. And then about three months ago, I had an organic urge to read the Quran. Like I've had it in my bookshelf for ages, but I never like, I couldn't read it. I tried to read it once and it just wasn't flowing. So I just followed this urge. I just kept waking up with the urge to read the Quran. SubhanAllah, like, Alhamdulillah. It was Allah all along. Because then basically I started to read the Quran and then started to feel like maybe Islam is real, maybe Allah is real, right? So I started to then pray, 
if this is Allah, if Islam is real, then show me. Like, is is it really? Is is, is Allah who or what I've been praying to for this whole time? Have you been the one guiding me for this whole time? I. You know what's interesting about her saying that she has the urge to read the Quran? Like, I felt the way when I actually was reading only a bit. And then uh, sometime I put it away and a couple of days later I felt the urge again to read the Quran because I want to know more about it. And my curiosity came also a lot because I wanted to compare the Quran with the Bible and see like how is uh, Jesus peace be upon him described in the Quran. Are there any similar stories? How about Musa alayhi salam? And I was super curious like my interest was so high for like learning more about the prophet stories and what does it actually say. And you know it's like interesting because she, she just mentioned I want to also point this out she mentioned that she wanted to know if Allah is real so yeah, it's like funny if you go to the uh, page of NASA uh, so you can actually look this up if you don't believe me go on Google and type in NASA expansion of the universe and you will come on a page uh, of NASA where NASA is actually and this is not a, they're not religious right like they are, I think mostly atheists maybe some Christians are there but they are saying there that the universe had a start and I think they call it black energy or dark energy and the universe was once one single point and it's expanding and spreading. It literally says this like they're confirming that the universe has a start and we if you if you read for example Surah Ikhlas in the Quran it describes so well that Allah was always there because he was never created by anyone right that Allah is infinite always have been there right. If you think about it, what NASA is saying on their page that the universe had a start right and the universe is now expanding and it's getting further and further and if I'm not mistaken I, ho I hope my memory is correct you guys can correct me or check it if I'm wrong but I think they did measurements between the distance of um, of star systems right or the stars themselves and they did measurements on like how the distance is actually getting further and increasing over time between certain planets or systems right and that way they discovered that the universe was once smaller and had a single point or something if i'm not mistaken so so this actually proves the existence of god like nasa themselves are indirectly proving that god exists right <laughs> allahu akbar for this whole time i was moved out of dark spaces like dark spaces like my connection with god is the only thing that got me through several years from 2018 i'm talking like extreme health conditions like wow. mad situations where i only had god i like literally went on a hermit mode for two years i didn't speak to anyone i left all my relationships even friendships and i only just prayed islam is a source of strength for muslim women both in their worldly and spiritual matters. Staying away from forbidden things like alcohol and drugs makes their life simple, modest, and stress-free. This is not a standalone story. Many other stories behind this one show why Western women appreciate the ways of Islam much more than their own religions and cultures. Here's the truth. Every day we listen to the news and hear big words like women's rights, feminism, patriarchy, women's liberation, and so on. Everyone has an opinion on Western feminism. Yeah. It has taken over the globe Sadly, with women's yes. rights being everyone's number one priority. But beware, the women's rights movement has taken another path and it's entirely wrong. It's wicked, it's brutal and it's unfair to all genders and religions alike. Yeah. It's no secret that even Westerners themselves, whether they be American, British, or Europeans, they no longer appreciate the path feminism is taking. It's too Instead, extreme. they are praising the ways of Muslim women more than their own. Let's start a debate, one that has been going on for quite some time. Are Muslim women stronger? than Western feminism. Of course. Let's keep it easy. The general stereotype is that Westerners think that Muslim women are supposedly forced to cover up. Islam encourages Muslim women to start covering their bodies from an early age. But the West has made it seem as if Islam oppresses women and does not let them breathe freely. What's happening here is that women draw strength from their faith and learn to be modest and humble. For them, covering up is an act of personal empowerment, True. which gives them strength against societal pressure 
Yeah, of course, because it's not objectification, right? Like, let's say you see, like, this is a, a study that was actually done uh, here, even in Germany, that women who actually reveal certain features, I'm just trying to, like, censor my speech, right? I don't want to cause you a fit now, but women that actually reveal certain body parts and they have a very good and fit appearance, they are more likely to get a job as well as younger women than women who are a bit out of, St beauty standards basically right so look matters when finding a job for a woman and they did a study here in germany so it's not even about 100 person qualification how smart a woman is how skilled she is but it's like that because <laughs> how do i say this okay for example men are uh, like I don't want to get like a stereotype so you think like all men are perverts i'm not saying that but men are more judging on looks of a woman than for example women are judging on looks on another woman like there's still a comparison of course between women like uh i actually like the way she looks i want to copy her because she's popular this and that but usually like the men are like this right so if there's like a a thirsty boss and, and there's like two women applying at the company one is hot and young and one is not so even the one that is not so it's like slightly better in her like working experience she worked one year longer her grades are not b but a in some subjects let's say right like the boss will most likely still take the young single attractive women into the company or as the secretary than the average or below average woman that has more skills because like everyone's like so brainwashed and look at the the rise of beauty surgeries like plastic surgeries like i recently came across a study and there was an increase of over 10 percent i read of more cosmetic surgeries being done to females it has increased by i think only three percent on males but 10 percent on females so it's seven percent a higher increase on the women than on the men that is a lot because if we're talking about numbers of tens of thousands or even hundreds of thousands in certain countries, like an increase of 10% is quite a lot, right? And why did it rise 7% higher than on the men? This is something to think about. And this comes all from social media. I believe social media, Instagram, TikTok, and, and women uh, post, posting themselves in a very sexualized way. This causes a lot of fitna even among the women where they're no longer happy with their own appearance, right? And where males create certain expectations for their future spouse. And this leads to more cheating, to more breakups and a lower marriage uh, like lower marriages taking place right because now men have even higher expectations because they see all the beautiful girls on instagram tiktok so if they meet an average girl that has like a nice personality they're like huh, what do i want with this girl i have so many pretty instagram girls i follow or something that's what they will think right so there's a lot of societal pressure on women based on objectification and the hijab actually protects a woman because if you see a woman that's covered up, you're not going to look at her body shape or at her cleavage out the billah or something or how her certain parts are, right? You look at her speech, her intelligence, right? How smart is she? Is she skilled at, at her profession or the way she's behaving and all that? Like you get a different picture based on non-physical factors, right? So this is like actually this is what I'm saying like the hijab is an empowerment to women because it brings out the true value of a human being and not the objectification against societal pressure to conform to Western beauty standards. Yeah. Not only does this protect them from the eyes of men, but it also men are allows thirsty by them nature. You have to kill every man on the planet if you want to stop their this. bodies. As said before, okay, Westerners <laughs> themselves are praising the ways of Muslim that would women be the end of and appreciating them. This shows that Muslim women are taught to be kind and caring to everyone, regardless of their religion or race. Don't we all want a society where everyone fulfills their duties and respects the rights of others? This is exactly what Islam is. Do you know what's even more alarming? Supporters of Western feminism are in tears over matters of marriage, relationships, and personal autonomy. The propaganda they like to spread about Islamic feminism is actually turning out to be true for Western feminism. It, look at the state of our men and look at the state of our women, basically. 
not only have we not known our role as a woman or a man in the family unit or whatever unit, but the roles are mixed up and confused. Yes. For example, it's seen as liberation to have a woman working the same as a man, yet we go through the pregnancy, the birth, and the yeah. rearing of the children too while maintaining the house. How is that liberation and how is that freedom for women? Look at the family units of the West today. Yeah. There is no system of maintaining families or respecting spouses unless someone is scared of the law. Yeah, and uh, let's let's uh, let me give you guys a, a very like let me give you actually two good examples, okay? So let's say you have a family where the husband works at an office, maybe he's like a software engineer or something, right? And the wife, she works at let's say she's a police officer, okay? So the wife has long working hours, mostly the whole like late morning until very late afternoon. Sometimes she has to work till late at the night, right? The the man is always in the office nine to ten hours sometimes, also because of his driving back to home, right? And now they have like a small, let's say a small daughter or small son. Who is going to watch after the kid if both are working full time? And 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 how how about like for example Every woman becomes a police officer or soldier. What is if suddenly a high amount of women get pregnant? Do we have now pregnant uh, police officers run around the street or soldiers? Uh, they go to war with big bellies or what? Like, you know what? Like that, that makes no sense, right? So if you have like a physical change that needs protection and it's at least for eight to nine months like this, right? Like usually women, I think the first month they don't notice that much, but month two or three body changes happen, right? So, and then, then you have like this one or two months of pause you need after birth at least. And then, you know, still you need to take care of the kid. So I would say maybe even some cases it's 10 or 11 months that a woman because of the pregnancy can't really work properly, right? So maybe it's even longer. It depends on if they go on break after the third or fourth months of pregnancy. So mathematically, Women for almost one year, if they have one birth, can't work. If it's two births, it's almost two years. So there's justice in Islam because Islam makes the man be the provider of the family. It's actually fat and you have to work for your wife as a man, as a husband, right? And why is that? Because by nature, if a woman is pregnant, she can't properly work and she needs someone to protect her. Like she will get sick, she has to go to the bathroom, maybe she has to, you know, or she feels very weak, tired, then there's hormonal changes, then there's like the monthly menses, right? Some women, maybe for one or two days, they just want to lay down and rest, right? So, 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 so at this time, there needs to be a protector, someone that actually brings the food home. And this is the man, because we men, we don't go through pregnancy, we don't go through menses. And it also brings actually care to the children, because it's either the men or the women that would technically need to stay home if there's a one-year-old child. Because with one year of age, you can't go to the kindergarten. It's too young. A kid needs to be like at least three years or four. And with three or four, you can go to the kindergarten. What about year one, year two? So who is going to do that? If the woman goes working, then the man has to stay home. But then the man doesn't feel like a man anymore. And his muscles and him being tall and him being able to build houses and maybe go to war or become a strong police officer that catches thieves and stuff. Like he can no longer fulfill this role because now he's at home and he's from the two the one that has like more muscles and that can actually go to war or fight or carry heavy stones to build a house or something right so of course then you need one to stay at home and in this case like there needs to be a role right so who takes care of the children is it the husband or the wife then you have to look at the biologically who's a uh, fitter who is uh, more of like masculine with muscles and can can work physically harder then you look at the men oh by biologically the muscle mass even scientists say that the muscle mass of men is higher men tend to be on average taller taller means you have more body mass more body mass means you can carry heavier stuff it means you fight better if you are in combat or something so physically wise men are more fit than women to work however and we, we talked about this in another video women are emotionally stronger than men have more patience and more compassion what actually helps children to grow up because a father can never replace the role of a mother completely even if he comes close to that he's never going to be as perfect as a mother
So yeah, we have to look at it from the whole view of everything, from social aspect, biological aspects, and a structure aspects of the family, that the family doesn't break apart and uh, the child becomes some sort of criminal later on or misbehaving child because nobody taught the child proper manners. So there needs to be at least one parent at home, right, taking care of the kid. And we can tell you that Muslims treat women with a lot of respect and honor. Yes, because it's Gone sinful are the days to not of financial so. abuse and forced marriages, whether it's education, inheritance, economic independence, or even divorce, Muslim women have a fair share of their deserved rights. Western feminism talks loudly about freedom and relationships, but when it comes to an argument or disagreement, we see that the bare truth is so far from that. Islam gives women the right to accept or reject marriage proposals and the right to divorce in case of a quarrel. Western feminism is flawed and it's failing its own women, let alone Muslim women. It causes depression too. What does this so-called Western feminism do for Muslim women? It doesn't give Muslim women rights. It leads them astray. It doesn't protect them. It does not keep them safe. It does not even liberate them. Just take a look at that German woman at the start of the video, and you can see everything right in front of you. Yeah. All it does is put fear in their hearts to choose between two options. Choose between your education or your religion. Choose between your job or your religion. Yeah. Choose between your passion or your religion. Choose between hijab or sports. Where does this leave Muslim women at? So is this really a question about who is right and who is wrong? Western feminism talks about, about freedom statistics. and rights. What they don't understand is that secular ideas and ignoring religion are destroying their systems. So much for a society spiraling and mental illnesses and drugs all the time. So much for a perfect society that doesn't even know what they're fighting for. What they fail to see is that for many Muslim women, true strength comes from their faith, modesty, and spiritual strength. So the debate really ends in a perfect and clear answer. If Islam is giving women all their rights, protecting them, and teaching them to be kind and caring, then Muslim women don't need Western feminism to protect them at all. No, Allah is the protector. Yo, let me actually quote a beautiful hadith from our Prophet Muhammad Wasallam for you guys. So our Prophet Muhammad Wasallam said, the best among you are the ones that are best to their wives and I'm the best to my wives. That means our Prophet Muhammad Wasallam, he actually taught us if we want to be really, really good men, good Muslims, we have to be good to our wives. And it's really like that. And women have a lot of rights. If, if a man does injustice of a woman, to a woman, then the woman can go to court and the man gets a heavy punishment in Islam, a very heavy one, maybe one where he's no longer even in this dunya. No, seriously, like this is true. So women have a lot of rights in Islam, like the media is lying about that. I can confirm this as a Muslim, like this is true. And how do you actually learn or compare which ideology is right or not? So in order to do that, you can go to statistics. Now, you could actually make a comparison and I'm going to do this now with rough numbers because I don't know the numbers by heart, but I saw them. So I did like a bit of research on this matter, actually, a, a couple of weeks ago, actually, I looked online ab about this a bit. So if you look at the divorce rate amongst uh, Muslims and compare them uh, with atheists and Christians, the Muslims have a much lower divorce rate than the people who are of other faiths. So, so you can look this up, it's online. Very, the statistics are actually speaking facts. So, hap, so families are more happy in Islam. This is a fact. Secondly, mental problems or the attempts of someone taking their own, you know, is much lower with Muslims than with other faiths. You can also look this up online. So Muslims tend to be less depressed than other religions. Why is that? Because we as Muslims, we have a purpose and we understand the meaning of life because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that he only created the jinn and the humankind in order to worship him. And he also mentions in the Quran that only in the remembrance of Allah, our hearts will find peace. 
So we as Muslims, we have a meaning to our existence. We know why we are here. We have a purpose. We wake up with a purpose. So we are happier. And because of the hijab, because of also the haya that a husband and a wife should have, of course the divorce rate is low because you're supposed as a man to lower your gaze if you see a woman, especially if she's uncovered, right? So, so you shouldn't be like eyeing down a woman like, oh, or something. No, 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 you don't do that as a Muslim. This is haram. The same for women. She shouldn't like show what she is carrying with herself, right? Like she shouldn't attract men in public. Because this also can lead to affairs and stuff. So, so all families are protected from cheating if Islam is, is practiced properly, right? So it's more stable. The raising of children is already managed uh, in Islam because we have roles between women and men. The men are the providers. The women, they usually stay at home and take care of the family and they get a lot of reward. And there's even a hadith where our women went to our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi and asked, Hey, the men are going to Hajj, they are going to Jihad, they are doing this and that, and we are uh, staying at home, we are giving birth to the children, cleaning the house. Do we get the same reward as men? And our Prophet Muhammad actually confirmed that they are also getting the same reward and that they are getting reward for working at home. So, as you can see, there is fairness and justice in Islam. So yeah, it's definitely better. But yeah, guys, that's it for today's video. And if you guys are new to this channel, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more content. If you guys enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give this one a thumbs up. And I will see you guys next time, inshallah.